Welcome to the Sunday game plan video. So in this video, I'm going to be giving an ETF overview. I'm going to be talking about the stocks that I'm watching and looking to trade this week. And then I'm going to be breaking down the Weenie Academy requests. They had uh, some stocks that they wanted to be, be broken down, and I'm going to be breaking those down at the end of the video. So be sure to pay attention if you want to be prepared for the upcoming week. And without further ado, let's get started. Let's start off with the SPY on the ETFs, S&P 500 proxy ETF. So look at the risk versus reward. We talked about that as it was pushing higher and higher and higher. I was like, oh, the risk to reward for being bullish is not the best at any given point, but SPY is really just a hold. But you can't be buying up at these um, highs because look at that, you got a fat little gap down and then just a, like a reversal. So SPY, you know, just kind of did like a little reset, reload, recocking the gun and then made new all time highs. So what's happening next on the SPY? Well, if SPY can hold this previous um, all time high, 435 call it, then we can expect um, the uptrend to continue and make higher highs. Otherwise, if we start to break, you know, let's 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 just call it this uh, this uh, red candles close right there. You know, I'll call it. I think it is 432.77, so 433. Then there could be a little bit of reversal. Spy is due for a little bit of a correction towards the second half of 2021, but just because it's due for a correction doesn't mean it's going to happen. But I want you to be aware of a potentially, you know, four to six percent correction that could bring you know spy down back to 410 and maybe as low as 400 now we'll have to be um uh, re-evaluating to see what type of trends and patterns form after that but that's just something to uh keep an eye out for so that's the spy next up we've got the qqq etf representing the tech stocks and higher highs and higher lows do we see this higher highs higher lows higher highs higher lows just a nice good steady uptrend you could draw a ruler with this. Not to say that that's a, a trend line to play off of, but it's a nice good visual to show that this is a nice good controlled uptrend. So Q's still bullish on the Q's. It's my favorite ETF. And while we're on the Q's, let's quickly break down of the FANG stock. So let's go over to Apple, AAPL. Apple, we've been talking about the breakout from 138 and through 140. I said, up oh, Apple very likely to make new all-time highs after that point. So Apple, in my opinion, it's a hold. It's a hold. Um, It's tough to be buying up here. Again, and you'd like to either see a pullback or for it to go sideways for a bit and then pop. So it, Apple's a hold, but if it were to dip back down into 139, 138, 140, I would like to accumulate more shares of Apple. If we look at the weekly time frame, we're starting to break a weekly pennant. So we could see multi weeks of Apple going up. We do have earnings, which will be a little bit, a little bit later if we zoom in a little bit over here. 7:27, so July 27th aftermarket. Keep an eye out for earnings. It looks like it wants to do a pre-earnings run-up. We've got a monthly bull flag as well. So look for multi-months of Apple going upside. I really do think that tech is undervalued. Um, I don't think it is a bubble, but time will tell, and we'll be really nimble and ready for both sides of the coin on that. So that is Apple. Next up, we've got Amazon. And did anybody enjoy this Amazon bull flag from last week's game plan? Look at that. Nice good move over 3,500. Boom. And then a nice good 6% move. These are the, the types of flag pops that I'm looking for. Look for Amazon to go higher. But for this week, maybe we go sideways a little bit. We might need to go sideways before we go higher. But if, you know, Amazon breaks Friday's high, 3,750, I'll probably be taking a few long trades on it. If we look at the weekly time frame, continuing that weekly breakout, this little weekly bull flag, we went sideways for like two weeks and then we can pop. But really, we've been going sideways for months. Look at this nice, good monthly bull flag. We can extend this little flagpole and we can expect Amazon. I think Amazon, I said 4,000 by the end of the year. That might be a little bit uh, short. Maybe maybe I'm 5,000 by the end of the year for Amazon. So keep an eye out on Amazon for more long trades. Next up, we've got Facebook, and Facebook still in a nice good uptrend. It is a little bit weaker than the other um, FANG stocks. So look for Facebook to probably just go sideways as the highest likely scenario, highest probability scenario. So that's uh, Facebook, and then let's quick check out Google. Google, similar thing to Facebook. Google's a little bit stronger than Facebook. Look for Google to go sideways to slightly higher over time. Um, so Google, tech stocks, bullish. You know, let's check out Netflix just to humor it. Netflix is not one of my more uh, favorite FANG name, but Netflix, look for this to go sideways, sideways to slightly lower. So that is the FANG. Next up we've got is the IWM, the Russell 2000, still sideways. If we look at the higher time frame chart, this is still a laggard. Uh, in my opinion. So I do think that IWM will eventually break out. When we get a consolidation like this, you got to decide, okay, are there more upper shadows 
or they're more lower shadows, meaning are there longer wicks on the bottom side or the top side? Well, we can see that we've got nice, good longer wicks on the weekly time frame on the lower side. That usually favors a breakout to the upside. I am more bullish than bearish the IWM. I'm just let, waiting for that um, confirmation, you know, over 233, 233 would be that likely upside breakpoint. And then looking for multi months of upside on the Russell 2000. So super excited for that trade coming up. Next up, we got the XLF, the financial sector, and these are most of the bank stocks. And I'm not a big fan of the banks. You know, Wells Fargo is starting to do some sketchy business practices again, at least without explanation. Not a fan of the banks. Look for uh, the XLF to go sideways to slightly lower. However, there is a, an, an, uh, an, uh, an underlying bid, usually most of the time on the XLF, that could push up SPY. But look for the banks, the, the XLF based off this formation could be a little bit of a topping formation and could roll over. I am not the biggest fan. Keep an eye on the banks. If they are starting to sell a little bit, I do think you could lean into more banks, shorts. Other than that, though, I usually like to stay away. And then lastly, let's just quickly break down the VIX. Kind of a little, as usual, nothing changed. Pump and dump on the VIX. Two-day pump, and then the rest, uh, dump. Two-day pump, dump. Look for the VIX to probably head down lower into the, you know, 13s and 12s, in which you, you generally want to be a collector of the VIX and 13s and 12s. More on that later. But VIX... Nothing too interesting there. Look for VIX to go sideways slightly lower. I mean, the, the when there's fear, it's usually unpredictable and usually some sort of black swan event. So that's the ETF overview section of the video. So now that I've broken down the ETFs in this video, I'm going to be talking about stocks that I'm watching to potentially trade this upcoming week and uh, for swing trades in the upcoming weeks. So crypto stocks, crypto stocks, I'm definitely starting to watch. Uh, we got Coinbase. We're starting to put in an inverse head and shoulders, which is a bullish chart pattern. We kind of got like, you know, just like a left shoulder ahead. And then now the right shoulder starting to break out. The pattern isn't perfect. It's more so that we've failed to move lower. We've tried so many times. If we Coinbase wanted to move lower, it had many opportunities to do so what happens if it doesn't move lower when it had many chances to do so we're probably going to go higher so i'm looking to buy coinbase over friday's high you know 256 260 and look for it looking for a move up to about 279 280 on coinbase in the next week upcoming weeks and you know stop loss is going to be have to be pretty loose coinbase is a pretty uh, spready stock but i'd probably give it an hourly close underneath 250 so that'll be uh coinbase I'm also keeping an eye on MSTR micro strategy because they do a, a lot with uh, Bitcoin and crypto. Looking for a swing trade up to about $795 if we can uh, start to, you know, really break above Friday's high, 635. Maybe give it a little bit more confirmation, 646, 650. But I do think that MSTR can get some legs up to that $800 price target over the next coming weeks and months. Oh, and I am starting to buy a little bit more uh, crypto on my Coinbase account. I've only had this account for about a month, so I'm not, you know, doing anything crazy with it. Just adding just a little bit each and every week. But yeah, as you can see, you can check out my portfolio here. I got a bit of Bitcoin, Bitcoin and Ethereum, my top two, a little bit of Cardano, a little bit of Polygon, and then the rest was just the free crypto that I'm just going to hold on to because why not? So uh, look, check out the Coinbase, you know, check out the referral in the description if you want to use Coinbase. Coinbase is still kind of learning it. It's not my favorite just yet, so we'll see how uh, Coinbase goes into the future. The next stock on my list that I'm looking to trade this week is Starbucks. And Starbucks, nice good little breakout. We talked about this Starbucks trade ever since 112. And if you uh, recall, look at this nice little uh, bull flag that started to pop bullish. It's kind of a little bit of a head and inverse head and shoulders, left shoulder head. Here's your right shoulder. Boom. There's your breakout on Starbucks just over, you know, 113, 114. And we're starting to press these all-time highs. Starbucks always has a long line. Yeah, I think they make a real, uh, you know, pretty good uh, money. But, you know, th that's besides the point. The chart looks more bullish, and that's what I really like. We uh, even uh, uh, broke out a little bit on Friday. So look look for uh, Starbucks to move higher. If not, the you know, the dip buy is about that 115 level if there is a little bit of a market pullback. But looking for Starbucks to test something like 120 this week or next week. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that Starbucks trade. You know, paid, paid a little bit of the bills. Nice, good slow mover. Let's get into our next stock.
The next stock that I'm looking to potentially trade this week is Disney. And I think Black Widow came out this weekend. Pretty exciting stuff. I think they probably did pretty well in the box office sales. But, you know, it, Disney tends to get some hype around the movie theater releases. I remember, you know, each of these times, you know, there, there's anytime there's uh, a movie does well, Disney tends to pop a little bit. That's a thesis, though. I still need the technical chart to confirm what I'm thinking on that thesis. And that would be kind of a breakout over this 178.50 level. Ideally, of the breakout is over 180. Disney's been a dud for quite a while, so I do think that it could get some legs. Disney can um, move pretty violently and pretty fast in a short period of time, but most of the time it moves pretty slowly. So Disney, kind of like Starbucks, a nice good slow mover. Not many people blow their accounts trading Disney stock as opposed to other meme stocks. So I think it's going to be some pretty good practice here on Disney. Next up, we've got the Weenie Academy stock breakdown requests. And I'm going to be starting over here with Tesla. Tesla, really interesting uh, price action on Tesla. We had a nice good move up and then we started to accumulate. But look at this. The, the tails, most of the shadows were actually upper topping tails. So that let us know, hey, people were accumulating short on this. Kind of like the inverse to what I was talking about earlier in the video with the IWM. And look at that. The short sellers decided to win. I was one of those short sellers and Tesla paid uh, pay, paid uh, pretty nicely. But Tesla, nice good move lower. Then we started to hit this rising trend line and this demand zone type of box and we started to rally. Now we've already bounced off of this, you know, 630 area, call it like 636 area. 630, yeah, 620 was the low. So we've already bounced. Now we, we close Friday just underneath resistance at about 657, 658, 659. So I do expect Tesla to probably get into a tightening range. Maybe we come down to 640 earlier in the week and then maybe we bounce and then we find some more resistance. I am expecting Tesla to break a little bit lower until and unless we can get above 700. So 700 is that upside break point. Until then, I am not interested in buying Tesla at all. Not interested at all. You know, I love the company, love the stock. I do think it'll be higher in the future. But uh, I do think um, I can potentially get a much better deal on Tesla down here at about 420. Maybe, uh, maybe, uh, uh, maybe we find some support at about 500. But looking at this area, maybe it's 480. Looking to accumulate in these lower zones, not accumulate up here. Now, if Tesla breaks out, oh, well, that's fine. I'm just going to trade it and continue to trade it as it continues to push higher. So that is Tesla looking more bearish than it is bullish until we get above that $700 a share level. The next request I have is NVIDIA and NVIDIA, nice good move. So remember this uh, bull flag over here? Nice good pop on NVIDIA over 600 and we've just been on a tear. It kind of looks like the Qs, higher highs, higher lows. And you know, at any point in this move, it's kind of difficult to chase. I mean, you can buy the pullbacks. If you bought the pullbacks, you did well. If you bought the breakouts, you did well. But the thing is, it gets riskier and riskier the higher and higher it goes before reverting a little bit back to the mean. So Nvidia, we got that stock split coming up. Maybe we do run into it, maybe we don't. I'd say if we're beneath the gap, look for Nvidia to go sideways to slightly lower. So I'll expect something like this maybe on Nvidia. Maybe there's a little dip by at about 750. But NVIDIA, if we get above the gap, 818, look for it to still go sideways. So eight, you call it 820, look for it to go sideways. And of course, we'll probably go higher if we start to break 835. That would uh, create another short squeeze. But NVIDIA looks a little bit top heavy, if you ask me. The risk to reward is not worth it to be in NVIDIA. Look for NVIDIA to go lower underneath uh, 790. That, that would be a little short-term flush point. And while we're talking about NVIDIA, let's talk about AMD real quick, advanced micro devices. And I'm more bullish on this. The risk reward is better on AMD, in my personal opinion, than it is on NVIDIA. And so AMD, look for AMD to break out through these all-time highs. Probably not this week. AMD needs a lot more time. Uh, but, but I am uh, scouting AMD and look, looking to see if we can uh, accumulate and maybe get that breakout over 95 and then add over all-time highs and then peel profits into 105 and 110 on AMD. Nice good, uh, nice good uptrend. Just kind of throwing AMD out there as opposed to N NVDA. NVDA is kind of the big boy stock and we've already had its big run. Let's let uh, NVIDIA cool off a little bit through either a correction in price or a correction in time. Our next request is Snapchat. So I'm going to be breaking down Snapchat over here. Snapchat, nice, good uptrend. You know, we're, we're still a little bit more horizontal. We can see that our low points are 50 and we can see that our high points are about 73. 
but we're making higher lows into that flat top resistance. So we've really, we really held this little previous breakout area. Look at this. We, you know, we, we, we hit our heads, we sell off. We hit our heads, we sell off. We break out. Now we come back to it from the top side. Okay, we're starting to hold it. Look for Snapchat to go higher. And you know, it, as long as it's you know above, you know, 62, I'll call it. I do think that Snapchat can continue it, this uptrend into all-time highs. Uh, Snapchat, you know, it's 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 not my favorite stock. I do think I'm more bullish than bearish on it. I do think there's better um, opportunities and social media platforms that could um, t uh, steal some market share into the future. But Snapchat, higher highs and higher lows. Watch that 62 level on Snapchat. Next up, we've got NEO as a request, and NEO is going to be a tricky one to break down. We kind of had this weird, awkward channel of, over here that broke bullish, but we started to really hit some strong resistance. That makes sense, right? I said I was targeting about the 53 level on NEO, 53 to 55. And why was that? We had a breakout over this level, you know, a little bunched up breakout, held the support, held the support, broke down. Now that we're coming to it from the bottom side, that's going to be some resistance and short sellers were probably licking their chops when that happened. So Neo, what's next for Neo? Well, I am bullish Neo long term. So I do think that Neo will be a much higher price than it is today, if everything that I know is to be true about the company. So Neo, bullish long term, but short term, I'm expecting this to probably go sideways. Expect Neo to be within a range underneath 50, but probably staying above 40. So might be a good week for iron condors on NEO, depending on if the implied volatility is there. If we could just quick check the implied volatility, that's pretty low, $3.86. It makes sense though. NEO's not expected to move higher or lower than about $4 this week. So expect NEO to probably just go sideways and chop around. That's the most likely scenario on this pattern. If NEO starts to come underneath 35, that's no dice. That's really bearish for the stock. Expect lower prices. If NEO can get above this 55 breakdown area and hold above it, look for NEO to make new all-time highs. Everything in between is unfortunately chop shop for NEO. So you kind of got to be patient and sit on your hands on this one. Next up, we've got GameStop, GME, and GameStop really had a, bit, a nasty breakdown formation earlier. So we did a little um, descending triangle. I was talking about this. Boom, we start to break down. I go ahead and short GameStop. And that's just through put options. I'm not actually shorting the stock. I'm just buying put options. And boom, I said, I'm looking for that 180 price target. Boom, covered right there. But now GME is in a downtrend. You know, we had the bear flag, you know, descending triangle, whatever you want to call it. We broke down. Now look for that br previous breakdown area to be some resistance. So GameStop, as long as it's underneath 200, expect the downtrend to continue and it for to make lower highs and lower lows and probably make its way down to 160 over the next coming weeks and or months. If we can reclaim 200, we still are in a downtrend, but there's hope for the bulls to see if it can move higher. So keep an eye on that 200 on GameStop. That's kind of our pivot. Beneath 200, bearish. Above 200, still not bullish, but there's hope. Uh, what would make GameStop more bullish? We'll get above this uh, breakdown candle and get above this gap. GameStop really needs to get above 300 for it to be bullish. And in that case, we'd probably be talking about a potential second squeeze, which is more unlikely than it is likely. So just be careful, leaning more bearish than bullish on GameStop. And I was wondering if there's any more requests and we do have some more requests. So yeah, we already got Nvidia and now let's check out SPCE as our last stock to break down today. SPCE, Virgin Galactic, seems like the test flight went pretty well. Virgin Galactic, really interesting daily chart. Lots of choppy, weird price action. You know, we can see our high points are about that 55 area. We can see our low points are about that 42 area. So get above 55, we can expect a breakout. Get beneath 42, we can expect to break down. Virgin Galactic looks like it might want to actually break out and eclipse these highs of 62, 63. And so we'll, we'll see, we'll be reevaluating the price action. Those are the only pivots that we can get. If we gap over 55, look for a gap and go day and we should see new all time highs. And then we'll, we'll, we'll have to reevaluate that at Weenie Trades Live. If we gap underneath, we gap underneath 42, look for uh, SPCE to flush, probably down to as low as $35 a share. So that'll conclude this Sunday's game plan. Please let me know if you have any questions, comments, funny jokes. Um, be sure to tune in to check out the Weenie Academy if, you if you've um, invested in the course. If you haven't invested in the course, check it out. Otherwise, check out the free content. No pressure or worries there. If you enjoyed the analysis, you're really going to enjoy 
the um, course that I offer. Alrighty, thanks for tuning in, you guys. See ya.